<clears throat> 53-year-old female here for persistent pain in the left wrist. This exam is consistent with uh, the core veins, tinnitus, and avitis. We have a little ganglion around the radial slide process. It's too small to drain it. Here we're going to go over the Quervain's tenosynovitis injection with a superimposed ganglion cyst, which you can see here over the extensor pollicis brevis tendon. And here's how of the abductor pollicis longus tendon with its surrounding tendon sheath. Now we're just rotating anteriorly. We can see the sheath surrounding the fourth extensor compartment. Here's the extensor indices tendon sheath. Here's the extensor pollicis longus tendon sheath. And here's the extensor digiti mimini tendon sheath as well. We're going to bring the wrist into the position of the procedure. Initially, we had the probe in an axial plane on the dorsal aspect of the wrist, and then we essentially just put the needle right through that ganglion. See it here rotating just to get a better view. And initially, we essentially got the needle into the ganglion and injected the ganglion. Maybe a little bit got within the first extensive compartment, but I wasn't convinced during the procedure. So we went ahead and we did a long access approach to the needle or sagittal to the body. And then we just put the needle right basically into the tendon sheath, which you can see here zooming in. So here you can see essentially a vein right over the first extensor compartment. You may mistake it for a ganglion initially. But as you follow it distally, you can see that it's a vein. And here again, here's a segment of this vein. And as we toggle along, we can make out this ganglion that is separated from the vein. You can see it right over the first extensor compartment. Also, there's a little bit of tenosynovitis as well within that first extensor compartment. Here we are looking at an axial view, and we can see basically this septum, which is shaped like a T. Here's one portion of this septum, and you can make out the extensor tendons, the extensor pollicis brevis tendon as well as the abductor pollicis longus tendon within the first compartment. The ganglion is sitting just superficial to the first extensor compartment. And this septum really just separates the ganglion from the first extensor compartment. Uh, there is a septum actually I believe within the extensor compartment as well which is more of the vertical orientated septum that we see here. And again here's a fairly good view of those two tendons right next to each other. And again, you can make out this septum, which is somewhat thick, and you may mistake it for a tendon, but I believe it's just part of the septum, which sometimes you can find within this first extensive compartment. Sometimes you can find also different slips of the tendons themselves within this first extensive compartment. And here we're looking at this more horizontal orientated septum separating the ganglion from the first extensive compartment. And again, here's a similar view, which is that little ganglion sitting above the first extensive compartment. I think the cyst is pretty subtle in sagittal view. Um, Again, here we are just looking at it in a sagittal view. You can see the septum, which is separating the vein from the ganglion. And again, here's the distal segment of the vein, as we saw earlier. Here we are, we're starting the procedure. We're actually sticking the needle into the ganglion itself, essentially just trying to break it up with the needle. We're in short access to the needle here. And you can see the needle essentially right in the middle of the ganglion. And that's, uh, it's too small to really drain it. And here we are injecting cortisone. You can see it traveling deep. However, I don't think it really entered the first extensive compartment, so we decided to do another injection. You don't see the tendons in the first extensor compartment secondary to anisotropy. We actually went ahead and injected more cortisone with the needle in long access, and you can see it uh, sitting just superficial to the first extensor tendons uh, within the tendon sheath. And as we start to inject, you'll see it spread distally. On a long axis view. And here's the injectate just spreading distally along the tendons, confirming that we're within the tendon sheath. Also, we're at the very edge of the sheath, and you can actually see it spread circumferentially around the tendons.